Mm. Hi guys. <laughs> so things about midday. Actually no, like 1 30. But I've had such a productive day for a Sunday actually. I woke up this morning and I went for my like my normal walk. I didn't like take my camera, I just wanted to like be in the moment. And then I I had a massive chunk of editing to do for the video that I just posted today, which you guys would have seen. I think my second 24 hour reading challenge. So I got that posted and then I filmed a couple of things I wanted to film today. But yeah, that's kind of very productive morning for a Sunday actually for me. I started reading One True Loves by the Logicus Reed. I'm literally almost halfway. This book, I've heard about this book so many times and I know like the plot of this book. There is a TV series on, is it a series or a movie? I'm not sure. There's an Amazon Prime right now that's that's based on this book so, but I haven't seen it. So I understand what this book is about. Like Emma and Jess are as, as, as school sweetheart. They travel the world together, have an adventure, build life together. And then they were married for like just a year after the wedding. Jessica goes on, to a, on a helicopter, goes missing in flight and suddenly it's gone and everyone assumed it was dead. And then two years, two or three years later, Emma moved back to her hometown and she's grieving and she falls in love again with Sam, who is like one of her close friends and things. I was just trying to figure out who she's going to go with. I've just been, I've, I've been enjoying it. Like it's been it's an easy read. I actually like it. I think I just want to know like, which she's gonna end up with but obviously i don't know what she's gonna end up with and i can't wait to discover that but if i have to pick halfway through because right now they've the way the book is structured is that it starts off with like the present day she's at dinner with her family and sam who is now a fiance and then she had this nice dinner and then she gets this phone call and this phone call is from jess which she didn't expect that and then it goes to the before time like how she first, how she first met Sam, how she first met um, Jess, and how like him like a couple and things like that. But one thing I have noticed, which I'm sure maybe it will be maybe later on in the book I'll get more detail. But from what I've read so far, I feel like she has more of a connection or a friendship with Sam than she did with Jess, based on the before side. I literally just got to the after part, so I've literally just last piece I like now is after, which is probably t tells her the story of what it is now. Now that's just back in her life but everything else i've read is like just giving us a bit of a backstory obviously i feel like her relationship with jess was very like rushed like we just saw them like the first night they actually spoke to each other for the first time in high school and then they had their first kiss and then next thing we know it's kind of like a summary of, like oh now she, she went to university they went traveling together now they were engaged like it was just very like rushed through but because she's known sam who's now fiance like since she was a child as well because he used to work in her parents bookstore or something i feel like the dialogue and the conversation and the connection between her and sam feels a little bit more like they have to have a good foundation because that's kind of what the book is telling me because there's more key moments and more interaction between her and sam than this they've been with jess so far maybe now that jess is back in her life and she's she do she might she might have some you might get more details about their relationship but for right now i feel like she has no connection maybe there's a reason why because if i have to pick right now for what i read i feel like sam might be a better pick for her anyway so you can tell i'm really getting to this book and now that i have no more like like work to do except sort of my pick out like my my clothes for the week because i have such a busy week this week in terms of having like quite a few social commitment and also i am going i'm heading home on Thursday, I'm going to see my I'm going to see my sister in Birmingham. I'm gonna sit down, relax, and breathe, and just continue reading my book. Outside of me to be in your shoes 
that fit so perfectly is I've been a nasty girl I've been <laughs> hi guys so it's a new day now it's Tuesday today and I just realized that I didn't speak to you guys at all yesterday after dinner I think I showed you a little bit of dinner which was quite a nice concert actually so basically it's this like community like workspace kind of thing in it's like a co-working space and they had a social event where they do this thing once a month where they try to bring people together in London and it's like a dinner like everyone's fed and the old dinner thing was free basically but then you you can opt to optional like donate money towards their like charity partnership and the founder was there and it was just so nice to speak to like just understand like her like uh, ethos like because she used to be like a, i think ex-social worker and then she started this like this co the co-working space actually as a private members club first and then i feel like they just felt like it wasn't like it wasn't like that mission was to kind of help people with loneliness in london and like get to bring people together and then really pri private members could kind of excluded people from doing that so they um started doing this i didn't just made it if, like like open to all but then you can i think of co-work the space is so beautiful as well like is this like historical like beauty like right in the like just next to the amazmith state station it's such amazing people just having like very interesting conversations i'm going into the office today so i'm just getting ready to leave and guys you can tell the sun is shiny compared to what i showed you guys yesterday when like yesterday morning when it was like pissing it down so even though i got home really tired yesterday I, I just had like i think about 20 something pages left in through one true loves and i finished this yesterday and i wanted to give you guys my book review for this book so i did rate this book a four stars and because i actually and i really enjoyed it so one thing i've noticed after reading like i think this will be my fifth book that i've read by um um Taylor Jenkins Reads this year and I've noticed that she's very the sun is gone out again it's she's very like character heavy like her books are not like very plotty like this book is basically cast away a romantic cast away kind of vibe you can't help but fall for the characters I feel like every single characters I've wrote wrote as she's wrote about I either love or hate them because they, they, they just she focuses a lot more on, on the characters I think it's like done before I think it's cast away but um Customable but from the woman's like the woman's perspective the way the book ended i am not surprised how the book ended i think i told you guys already before that i feel like the way what from what i've been getting from the story and the way she goes into like specific like situation and between her relationship with sam and relationship with jess i kind of knew she, what she was going to end up with anyway because i feel like there was more of a connection and i feel like spoilers I'm, I'm sorry guys i can't do this without a spoiler i'm gonna have to give it spoilers so she ended up with sam and i'm not surprised she ended up with sam because I feel like, obviously, from the beginning, from the first part, I read, I feel like there was more, we saw a lot more of her relationship and dynamic with Sam than we did with Jess. And also, the, the all concerns that, oh, you know, when she thought she lost Jess, that, that event changed her as a different person. But I don't think it really changed her. I think it just helped her see what she, what she really wanted. Because even, even before, like, Jess went on that helicopter, you could tell from what I read, you could tell that she was already like kind of bored of their life, like constantly traveling, like constantly being in different airports and hotels and things like that. She was already like not that like she wasn't like she was already feeling like she wanted to like settle. I know she she went with Jesse to rebel against the parents, trying to find herself. And also I feel like Jess was like the cool guy in school. You know, like when you have a crush on like the popular boy and the popular boy like gives you attention. I feel it was that tiny element in that as well. Like, oh, you know, I finally got the, the you know, the hit guy and I just, she just went along with him. I'm not saying she just went along because she was, she didn't, she didn't have agency. She did at that point, she want, that's what she wanted. And, and she, she got to explore that park. She wanted to travel and stuff. But I feel like after that she was, ready to go back home but her breaking up with jess is inevitable because it sounded like towards even before he left for his trip they were on different pages he wants to like settle in california where they were and she was like ready to like settle down somewhere more like be near family so they were just different people and then obviously when Jess jesse came back i kind of knew like the way she was writing about how jesse didn't want to like confront like talk about what happened to him and oh my god there was parts i think yesterday when i was reading that during my lunch when i was reading this it was the part where he was telling her like how we survived those three years and i swear to god i cried i was just like oh my god this sounds 
awful like having to like the things they have to do to survive like i can't even imagine being alone in the middle of the ocean basically by yourself for t over three years with no one to talk to like obviously you've seen castaway you know how how mad um tom cruise um tom cruise sorry tom hanks character went like literally talking to a fucking bowling ball for like how many years it was there and like it was just so heartbreaking obviously that kind of event would change you like obviously he kept thinking about emma the entire time because he needed hope like I feel like he needed to have something to look forward to, something like to keep him going, to make him stay alive, to f make him like want to fight to get back home and things like that. But once he came back, it was a completely different person. Like, I really enjoyed this book and I really enjoy like the story and stuff. I love it so much that I think I might watch a TV show. But then one thing, I so I looked at the ca the casting for the TV show, and it was so different from the characters are they desc describing the book and i feel like this is going to be difficult for me because i said these books are very like character heavy you end up like falling in love with the character and she's quite des descriptive or actually explains what they look like what they do are the personality and things like that like the only person i think my that matches the casting was i think jesse i think the casting for the other two characters are so off and i understand like you have to be diverse and be inclusive and things like that but when you when you're basing a movie or a tv show on a book the least you can do is basically try and match the characters either described in the book kind of thing point she had like a blonde pixie cut and i think the girl that is being casted for this show she's br i think she's brunette I'm not sure if i want to watch it because i feel like i really enjoyed this book and i love the characters i don't want to like ruin that experience by watching the tv show if it just like puts me off and as well if they're so different from what i imagine in my head I know they don't, have to, they don't have to look exactly like people I imagine in my head because obviously no one can see what's in my head but like at least sell me you know what I mean the first book I'm going to read because I've had this book I think it's actually available on Kindle Unlimited as well yeah the Toro Empire trilogy and I'm starting with the first book it's Empire of Lost um, I think all three books are as I said the trilogy series follows the same character it's been described as dark age gap billionaire romance it just sounds like all oh, my things i love like it's got like it's got like three of the tropes i love basically um, and i say it just sounds interesting and it'll be my first book that i'm reading on my new keyboard e-reader i'm so excited to do this if you yeah my last book i put this up in my last vlog you could have seen me unbox it or you'll have seen the shot of me unboxing this but this is my first time actually using it i it just uploaded quite a lot of my books on there and i'm heading to the office today um i am in in the office quite a lot today i went in yesterday and i'm going to go in for the next two days as well i'm still doing my walking challenge i think i'm on day day 15 of my daily walks so i'm just halfway through it but i'm still going i'm still like i'm still doing come rain or shine even though it's sunny today guys hey, hey, hey. i'm so tired like what time is it it's eight it's eight o'clock right now i just had my dinner but today was such an hectic day for me like i didn't even like i barely was able to have my lunch and stuff just crazy crazy day i just feel exhausted and now it's raining i'm telling you guys anyway i wanted to check in because if I didn't talk to you guys now, the way I'm feeling, I think I, I wanted to do some, I need to do some editing and then I need to go to bed. But I'm still reading Empire of Law. The issue with that book is that it's just pure smart. That's what it is. Because I'm like, I think I'm on like page 85. There's 280 pages altogether. Yeah, so I'm like, I've done, I've written, read a, a big chunk of it follows Callum and Bianca. Bianca is Callum's daughter's best friend. She just finished university so I'm assuming she's like 21, 22. She had always fancied her best friend's dad. Tatum, yeah. Tatum is Callum's daughter. She's moved to France for something. We don't know what. Bianca caught her boyfriend tuning on her so she's had to move out of her house and then because she has nowhere else to go, she's moved in with basically Callum and now they've just had like a sexual relationship and stuff. But this book is pure smart because 
I'm 85 pages into this book. I can't tell you what Callum does for a living. I can't tell you what his age is. I can't tell you why Tatum has gone to France because we don't know why she's gone to France. I don't know what Bianca does for a living. I don't know what university she went to. I don't know what course she did. Like, but I know that she likes to give Callum fellatio. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's absolutely no plot. Like, I love it. I love like a dark romance, and like this is is advertised as dark romance age age gap billionaire romance there's not a romantic about this it's just pure small literally it's just pages and pages and pages of them like either having sex touching each other and then when is they're not together he's thinking about how he wants to fuck her and then she's thinking about how she wants to fuck him like that's all it does I, i'm waiting for the for this plot to start like, i love a spicy because i love a spicy book but like at least give me something like there's nothing and this is meant to be a thriller um thriller just three three books i don't think i can make it part to three books because i'm just like this is just ridiculous like i'm when i was when I was on my way home today i was thinking like maybe give it a chance i give it a chance it might pick up i don't want to dnf it but like it's looking like i might dnf it so i'm just I, this is the thing about like i love like books like this but it's quite hard to find like really good ones like obviously i've read some good ones in the past before like are really good but there's so before you can get to the good one there's so many trashy books like they're just like first time writers just just playing around and just like thinking that the more they put sex into your book is is, is it makes the book good no it's not actually definitely gonna switch books because i can't believe i forgot today is the 11th of june she actually has a new book out today after lunch i was thinking i don't know why anyway i said i was i'm part of her newsletter so i got an email i'm like shit i forgot like if i know i was signed that book this morning I, so it's the book is called the woman by the lake i was right and it's the third book in the misted pine series i calculated all your voice the rise and guys I just got home from work right now. I'm saying hi to you. You guys can see my face. And I wanted to give an update on my reading. That much. So I, as you guys know, I was reading the Empire of Lost yesterday. And I decided I was going to like, that was it. Like I, was, I wasn't going to do it anymore. And then it's when I woke up and I tried again on my way to work on my commute. This morning to just read it. I think I read about two more pages. I was like, nah time of debt i need to close this now it's just on my vibe like if it's just not um doing it for me and what sealed it was when bianca was like i'm starting my new job tomorrow the hr company blah blah, blah. like I'm, the hr has replied blah, blah, blah. and she didn't even say where she was where she was working like what she's doing as a job and things like that like i just feel like i'm just reading the only thing I know about these people is how much they want to F each other. And it's quite repetitive. I want her. Guys, I'm thinking about I shouldn't have her. She's too young. But I don't care. My she, my, my daughter will not like it. I don't care. Like, it's just over and over again. And this is meant to be a trilogy. Like, it's going to first purchase from the Kobu store. I bought Woman by the Lake by Christian Ashley. And I started reading this like on my way home now i literally i'm two percent in like two percent like maybe 12 pages just literally just started so i'm so excited to just get on with that and obviously i'm so giddy like oh my god new christian national book like i just know how i love it like i know my girl and before i can start reading my book i have a lot of life admin to do i'm going away this weekend so i need to pack tonight tidy up my flat like change um just do like little things do laundry just little things so when i come back on i think i'm back on cheese and um, monday evening i have a clean house and to come home soon. and also like i i have to be in the office tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning which doesn't sound crazy to some people but for me that is crazy because i literally make i get to work around 9 9 15 like my work is quite flexible in terms of like where you can go in and stuff but tomorrow we have a meeting so i need to be in by eight o'clock in the morning so i need to be guys and just let you know guys what i'm doing reading why i haven't really done a lot of reading which kind of shows you guys how like how busy i am i'm very good at like reading i'm quite quick i'm quite a fast reader and the reason is because i just couldn't the empire of lost i just was really trying really hard i just could not it was getting to a point which is quite cringy like yeah and then i went on to good good reads 
and the reviews I was seeing is I wish I, I normally don't some, sometimes I don't check the review of a book but um I checked the reviews and I was like oh everyone was like DNF at 20% DNF at 25% I DNF mine at 36% so I did give it a chance <laughs> Um, Kibble thing is so light, like I keep dropping it because it's so light, but yeah. And I'm now on page 30. Friday and it's like 7 a.m. I'm at my sister's. Um, she, she's still in bed, so I don't want to like make any more noise. But I'm still reading The Woman by the Lake, which guys, this is a classic Christian Ashley book. Like I am thoroughly enjoying it. Like it's it started out pretty slowly. At first, because it's like not so slow, but like the first chapter or two was just like, but now I'm like into it. I'm like 50, I'm like 57% into the book. I've got three hours to go according to this. I love, and I'm going to do like a full review of my Kibo because I love it. I love the fact I'm sure because I've never had a Kindle, so I'm not sure if this is in a, in a Kindle. I'm just going to talk from like my experience from it so far. I like the fact that even if it's off. Or even if you're sleeping, the the artwork from the book you're reading is just gonna be in the cover, which I love. And then it always tells you like how far along you are in the book, and then it tells you like how long the thing you're gonna read it based on your reading speed and finish this book today. Which I'm hoping to to be fair. I wanna pick finish this book and then start another book. I've truly excited, I have another book in mind I wanna read. So yeah, I'm getting on really well with it. So this book follows Nadia, Nadia and Riggs, which is a weird name because she does have a guy called Rig in Taking the Leap in the um, River Rain series. So I don't know, I was like, the name is a bit weird. Like she's, I think she kind of reused the name and remix. One of Riggs friends is called Bubbles and there was a Bubba in the Sweet Dream, in Sweet Dreams, which is the second book in the Colorado Mountain series. So I feel like some of our names were like, like maybe, maybe, they, maybe they are Easter eggs. Maybe they are like little Easter eggs that she put in there. Like if you've read some of our other books, you kind of relate the names, but I just felt like they were quite similar. And as a question, Ashley, like Stan, I noticed things like that. And with Nadia and Riggs, um, Nadia just had a massive like um, loss in her family. Like I think her mom just died or something. So she, and she, her mom died in a very brutal way. Like it was awful. Like it was horrible. So she took a year sabbatical from work, and they rented like this cabin in Mystic Pines, which is where this book is set. Set, and all the books in the series is set in this small town. It's near Washington. She rented this cabin just to like try and figure herself out, cause now she lost like a mom, a husband. Like she has no family left except like a family of friends. So she just wanted a year to kind of um check out and just not check out just like find herself again just like recover from what she's gone through anyway this cabin which is beautiful and cute and everything is kind of in like next to rick's massive like property and stuff so they started off like a little bit of an enemies to lovers but now they're getting on but everyone loves them because it's like really nice like everyone in the town love him because everyone loves like his cool popular smart good looking all that kind of stuff so anyway but she found out that the cabin she's on she's been living on there's a story behind it. like even though it's been there for 15 years no one has actually lived there it's like low in town like the cabin is haunted by this story there's a story behind that as well happened because the people that owned the property before there was a massive like scandal like big drama and stuff and now everyone thinks that cabin is haunted which i don't think is haunted because i feel like i can guess what's happened from what i've been reading i have a feeling 
the messiness of what happened with the family that owned there before. So basically, there's two, I'm just gonna tell you guys, so there's two brothers, that are twin brothers. They are like very like successful like writers or something. And they write together as a as a thing, and then one of the brothers, I think it's called Rose Roosevelt, is like a bit of a recluse, and he was living in the cabin, and then the big mansion house, the other brother Lincoln and his wife Sarah was living there, but it turns out that Sarah and Roosevelt were having an affair, and when Lincoln found out, them in the stables, apparently shot them both dead, and then burnt them in the cabin thing, then he called the police and confessed. And then he went to jail for seven years. And then after seven years, when he came back, he committed suicide or something. So everything is supposed to be dodgy. Nadia now is going to her focusing on trying to like walk through what she's going through. She's now found a new prep project that she thinks the story doesn't add up. Like it feels like maybe Lincoln confessed to the crime of killing both Roosevelt and Sarah because he was protecting someone. And then also... The way the estate was left, the estate, and for some reason, all the money is linked between the three of them, like the two brothers and Sarah. And now, everyone in the family is fighting for the money, like the, their kids are fighting for the money. Sarah's parents are fighting for the money. The twin brothers' parents are fighting the money. They all want the money to go to themselves. Like they didn't even think about going to the kids. They want it. And then Sarah's sister wants the money. So, so there's a lot of messiness going on. So she thinks that there's a bigger story. But I feel like. First of all, I thought maybe one of the kids caught the caught them, like caught um, Roosevelt and Sarah having sex, and then she the, the kid killed the parents, and then maybe Lincoln was kind of protect his kid. But then if he was doing that, it would have made change the will when he was in prison to make sure the money went to his to his, to his kids. But it never changed in prison. He came out of prison, and then all of, all of her is dead, like he drank. Apparently, you drank uh, arsenic or something, and it's like, just be like, well, if you wanted to kill himself, why wouldn't you just kill himself in prison? Do you know what I mean? So, it's just a bit. So, there's there's like two stories going on simultaneously, like, what actually happened? So, anyway, because of this theory that Sarah's having, she and Riggs are like, um, spoke to the police department, and then they're going to reopen the case and actually investigate it because they never investigated the crime because obviously, linking confess to killing but Sarah and Thingy. So now so that's that the investigation is going. So this book is actually like a roman like romantic suspense. The romance is the main plot and I think there's a sub um sub genre of mystery which I love. That is kind of how um Krishna actually writes a book. Like she's first and foremost a romance author but there's always like a subplot of like crime of like mystery or like crime solving and things like that. So I love that. So I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I want to know like what's the back i can't wait to know what happened like the story there i was actually hunting um the um the cabin as well Sunday and I think the last time my camera was Friday or Saturday I'm not sure anyway today's Sunday and I'm in a new location now I'm at my mom's <laughs> I feel like I've done like a walk tour um so I was over I was actually down for the weekend to see my sister and it was my brother's birthday as well so um that's why I'm kind of around my family excuse the eye I am allergic to cats and my mom was cat sitting for a neighbor a couple of days ago so all the like i think the cat hair or like a cat being in the house has literally flared up my allergy and this is like i've taken some antihistamine and some some, some eye drops in but yeah my eyes i mean i feel actually i sound better because like this morning when i woke up i sound like so congested so yeah i am allergic to cats but i wanted to come on here guys quickly because i feel like this vlog has run it was meant to be like a week long vlog but it's just bleed bled into the weekend a bit um i'll try 
and hopefully I've tried and edited it enough that you guys can get the gist of it. But I wanted to come on and give you guys my my review and my thoughts on The Woman by the Lake by Christian Ashley because I finished that on Friday actually. And then I've started reading um, Smoke and Still by Christian Ashley as well. I don't know, I just wanted to read her book. Anyway, because I, this week I was wanted to stick with like dark romance, like mafia romance, MC romance kind of vibe, this kind of vibe of books. But obviously that did not work out with the Empire of Lost trilogy because I, I DNF that on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I can't remember. The Woman by the Lake by Christian Ashley. And guys, I'm just gonna say, so I can just start off, it was a five star read, which is, you probably might think, oh, you know, because she loves Christian Ashley, she obviously gave me a five star. It's actually not true because I haven't given any of Christian Ashley books a five star in a long time. I think the last book I read from her, which is The Avenging Angel, I think I gave that a 3.75 or a 4 star, actually. So I give all of books, like, between 4 star and 4 and a half star, because I love her. I first discovered that, like, I think her OG books, which is, like, books from, like, the 2012, 2010s, those books were, like, classic Chris Nash, and, like, all those books were my 5 star. And I feel like this book was kind of, like, those classic vibe for me. So Woman by the Lake follows Nora and Riggs. Nora just lost her mom, so she took a sabbatical from work to just process a grief and obviously a mom in the last family she had and she, the way her mom died was the way her mom died was so gross so I'm like awful basically her dad uh um what's the word you use for that an absentee father basically a dad that she didn't even know so her mom told her her dad was like dead, dead died in a car accident so she never even knew her dad but her dad basically came back from prison or wherever it was and basically beat her mom to death so it was such a graphic scene and she I think she obviously walked into it and stuff so after going through that loss she just needed a break from like life so she used to, she took a sabbatical from work and then spent to sp and she said to spend a year in this cabin in Misted Pine which is a small town um and this town I think is either in Washington state or like next not far from Washington state either or anyway this entire book series so this book is the third book in the Misted the Misted Pine series and this and all these books are based in that town. So the first two books I read, I think the first book I gave it three star or four star, I think, and then the second book I gave it four star because I really enjoyed that. But this book is the five stars. I think it's my favorite book in the series so far. Um, as, as I said, this book is like an OG Christian. Nora is she's sitting in this cabin in Mrs. Pine, and then she's literally the cabin is on the same like plot of land with Riggs' house. Riggs has the bigger house, and the cabin's like a small one bedroom flat anyway. So they share like a, a lake together or whatever. And they started off with like this like little like friends, the like, enemies lovers kind of vibe. Like they not an enemies, like a bit of a night 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 nightmare neighbor, neighbor. Basically, Riggs ran through like one point. Riggs ran into our yard. She's like, "Don't run in my yard." And there was a point where like he had a crazy party, and she had to go and tell him to keep the noise down and stuff like that. Like those kind vibe but after that little like initial to situation he like kind of came in with a peace offering and they kind of got on and they kind of obviously basically fancy each other anyway so they were just like that so that's kind of a start so i feel like their relationship romantic relationship was actually well like well written for me i love that i love the way the pace of it and rick is a single dad because like, he's, he's a traveling like construction he has a construction firm but he goes around like um different parts of the country because he has like big contracts he's, not, he's very well known for like his work and things like that like so he travels is quite well off and he's a single dad um so when he's, he's not traveling his son stays with him full time and then when he's traveling this son stays with his mom and stuff like that there's an old story behind like the mom and him like you need to read the book to to get that part because i think it's quite juicy for you to know anyway so in this cabin which is a beautiful cabin it sounds like it's a nice place she found out from Riggs that actually no one has stayed in that cabin in 15 years that she's the first person to stay there because there's a law in town that this cabin is haunted and stuff and obviously this book is not a, it's not a paranormal book it's not a supernatural it's not a fantasy book it's actually like normal so more but so there's nothing there's no there's no there's no, there's no such thing as ghosts so obviously then she gets a little bit of a background of what happened in the house like the issue behind the house that follows like twin brother authors like famous authors and the kind of that there's a tragedy about that death and things like that so this book is obviously this is a romance book first like but there's this the sub genre subplot is that there is a mystery to solve all the books in the series are like that like there's always a mystery to solve like the first book i think the the 
the male character there was like an ex like a ex um fbi profiler and then the second book is like a an fbi investigator and then this one i think both both of them don't work in law enforcement but it's still like a, a, the hint of um of um, what's it called like mystery something and stuff like that but the mystery was so moving i kind of guessed a little bit because i feel like so i don't i didn't guess who did it i guessed like the there was a misunderstanding so i feel like the twin brothers in the, in the mystery they're actually in like um like a trip at a tropo. so basically both basically both twin brothers was actually married they were married to the same woman and a kid she had like three kids one of them like the and the, those two of them kind of basically fathered the kid, her kids and stuff so that it's like one big love family dynamic but obviously back in those days no one really like knew but if, i think most of their close friends and family close friends and family the kids knew that so people just thought that one of the twin that was married to her legally um caught them caught his wife cheating with with his brother and then kill them but he didn't so there's a backstory there which is really good so i think that was well written and then when we found out who did this like oh my god she wrote it really well it's like this is why i love rockwich national like it's just well done i thoroughly enjoyed it so that's why i give this book a five star and i i literally guys if you look at ashley like you guys try and read this book as well like it's just came out i think it's everyone should read like it's very nice like if you love romance and you love like reading thrillers or like mystery books and you want like a mesh of both words together i feel like Christian actually is the author that does it perfectly like doing like a romance with the sub subplot of mystery she does it really well and this book was a perfect example of how like how good she is and i really enjoyed it so yes yeah, so i always come on and give you guys my review of this book it's a five star read my first five star read from Christian ashley this year and in a while as well um and now after i finished reading this um still smoke still i'm, I'm like 38 percent and i probably finish up today at some point i'm probably gonna do like um yeah so after that i'll probably read this but i've decided i'm going to read the entire misty pine series so i'll probably vlog that for you guys next week so i'm gonna do like actually like a reading vlog of me reading the three books so i'm gonna reread woman by the lake yes I'm doing that so <laughs> I'm gonna read I'm gonna read all three books again and then I'll probably do like a full-on review but I just want to give you guys a quick like just say good let's just finish up this blank I like say goodbye to you guys like, I'll make a little outro for this vlog because I feel like this this week has been so all over, all, all over the place in terms of my content I, I hope that my editing mix I did some work in my edits and everything makes sense for you guys and you guys enjoy this if you made it to this far in the vlog thank you guys thank you so much for sticking with me to the end i really appreciate you guys support um and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next vlog video <laughs> um bye